utterly spiritual self. Okay? Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. I will never forget it. I will never forsake it. I will never forget it. I will never forsake it. Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. Because I always took a child on the right to 
Temptation just coming from all this But it's a girl down like always Nobody can dare go side us Like people so chat in the classes uh. My dreams got a flexing Next thing, God did a blessing And I sing cause I had a heart about it And I be, God is my helper And did you know we are all just the same Now you know Did you know we can all just unite And did you know when God is the key to your life A welcome song. Then after that, we will have an uh, introduction to the high faith and talking about the significance of the day today. Then we will read a letter from the Supreme Board of the Baha'i Faith, the Universal House of Justice. Then we will have a brief story, a dramatic story about the life of the Bab. This will be followed by a video from the Universal House of Justice. Dear friends, hai mabu yote mbaya yamekuwa kwenye ratiba yatakuwa yanatupa ufahamu zaidi kuhusu hii siku. Kwa hivyo chochote kama tutakuwa tunafanyika kwenye jukwaa hili, ukiwa makini kabisa utakuwa unapata habari kamili. Kwa nini wabahai wanaelezi hii siku? Kwa nini wabahai wanasherekea hii siku? Na kwa nini wanaipa umuhimu mkubwa hivyo? Mara tena nasema karibuni Mujisikie huru, mujisikie nyumbani, tushereke pamoja. Sisi wabahai, katika shukuli zetu zote, tunawakaribisha watu wote bila kuweka mipaka. Karibuni sana. Uh, at this point, ningependa kukaribisha a welcome song organized by Judy.
exalt me by admitting me to the kingdom. I am happy. Make me heaven. I am of the world. Let me belong to the name above. Gloomy sufferings become radiant. Material men will speak. And friends as I may manifest, thy infinite cause. So are the all multiple, the all knowing, the all one. The name of this to grow. We make the shadow of the living planet. And now, the shadow of land. First, we need to be not just for the world of the clouds of the mountain. And from the starting of the garden of love, make me think of the future. God the mighty and the powerful. And God the holy and the God the holy and the holy and the holy.
kutoka jadi moja wewe umeamuru kwamba wote wawe wakaya moja mbele ya utakatifu wako wote ni watumishi wako na binadamu wote wamelindwa chini ya hema lako takatifu wote wamekusanyika pamoja kwenye meza yako ya ukarimu wote wanaangaziwa kwa nuru ya majani yako e Mungu wewe umwema kwa wote umewajalia wote umewalinda wote umewapa uzima wote wewe unamjalia kila mmoja na wote akili na uwezo na wote wamezamishwa katika bahari ya rehema yako ewe bwana mwema waunganishe wote acha dini zipatane na yafanye mataifa kuwa taifa moja ili kwamba waweze kujiona kama uko mmoja na dunia nzima kama nyumba moja wote waweze kuishi pamoja kwa mafatano kamili E Mungu inua juu kabisa bendera ya umoja wa binadamu E Mungu simamisha amani kuu kabisa unganisha kwa udhabiti E Mungu mioyo pamoja Ewe baba mwema Mungu furahisha mioyo yetu kwa manukato ya upendo wako furahisha macho yetu kwa nuru ya uongozi wako Furahisha masikio yetu kwa sauti tamu ya neno lako na tulinda sisi sote katika kone ya majaliwa yako wewe u mwenye uwezo na mwenye nguvu wewe u msamehe na wewe u yule ambaye usamehe makosa ya binadamu wote Better to guide one soul than to possess more. For as long as that very soul is under the shadow of the tree of divine, he and the one who made it will both be seated of God and of us. With us, possession of everything is seen at the time of death. The path to guidance is one of love and compassion, not of force and coercion. This has been God's method in the past and shall continue to be in the future. He caused him who to enter the shadow of his mercy. Then he is the supreme protector, the ordinance. There is no paradise more wondrous for any soul that was to be exposed to God's manifestation in his day. To hear his verses and believe in them, to attain his presence, which is not but the presence of God. To sail upon the sea of the heavenly kingdom of his good vision, and to partake of his of the choice one of his of paradise of his divine ones. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God is endowed with such potency as can instill new life into every human brain. If he be of them that comprehend his truth. All the wondrous works he beholds in this world have been manifested through the operation of his supreme and most exalted will. His wondrous and impeccable purpose. Through the mere revelation of the word fashioner, issuing forth from his lips and proclaiming his attributes to mankind. Such power is released as can generate through successive ages all the manifold art which the hand of man can produce. This verily is a certain truth. No sooner is this resplendent word uttered than its animating energy, stirring within all created things, in birth the mean and instrument whereby such art can be produced and perfected. All the wondrous achievements 
in our weakness are the direct consequences of the revelation of this day. In the days to come, he will verily behold things of which he have never heard before. Mm-hmm. 
family of the life of the father. Uh, from the vintage point of those who knew him best. But before I go to that, I want to read some words of the Bab. Some of the words that Bab uttered in the early stages of his declaration. And he said, I am, I am the promised one. I am the one whose name you have for a thousand years involved. At whose mention you have raised me. Whose advent, whose advent you have longed to witness, and the hour of whose revelation you have prayed God to hasten. Verily I say, it is incumbent upon the peoples both of the east and of the west to obey my word and to pledge allegiance to my pastor. So we are gathered here for the remembrance of that day that the beloved God was born. And the following, as I said, is a summary of the life or are presented by an imitation of those who knew him best. And to start with is Fatimi Bagu, the mother of the Bab. She suffered in Jericho Soros after the declaration of her son as a messenger of God and he who came to prepare the way for the coming of Baha'u'llah. As a result, she moved to Najaf, which is not far from Baghdad. But she did not recognize the exotic station of Baha'u'llah of the Bab. However, Baha'u'llah, whom the Bab came to prepare the way for, did send two of his friends to come and teach her about the exalted station of her son. Towards the end of her life, she did recognize that the Bab, the very son that she brought up, was indeed a messenger of God who had brought God David. Katijipa Guru became the wife of the Bab. She was among the first people to recognize the station of the Bab as a messenger of God. Her obedience her loyalty, her patience, were some of the gems that she wore, like a child in the crown. At an early stage of his life, the Bab unfortunately lost his father. And his mother's brother, Taliaza, who is his uncle, took charge of him. Kaliazam was the second person in the family to recognize that the Bab was indeed a messenger of God. The Bab go to attend some schooling at a certain AR point of his life, and that was under the tutelage of Sheikh Kabir, who owns who owned a small school. I did not get a summary of his life from these people who knew him best.
and our prayers were answered. And on the 20th October of 1819, this day, I gave birth to a healthy baby boy. You can imagine how joyful we were, but we never guessed our infant was born to follow a divine destiny. I'm of the bar and a brother who was a It was a terrible blow when she lost her husband and she was left a young mother with a little father. She was left a young mother with a little father. When the mom attained the age of six years, I enrolled him in the school of Sheikh Habib, where he stayed for some six, five to six years, studying particularly the curriculum of the era, which included the study of the Quran, the rudiments of the Persian language, arithmetic, in hundred. Since also I was a merchant by profession, I intended to take the bar with me into my business once he finished his studies. Did I notice that the boy exhibited extraordinary powers? No, not really. Men of my type had no time for youngsters. It was the mothers who stayed home to raise the children. However, I raised the bar as if it was one of my own. I am Sheikh Kapit and I followed the Sheikh movement led by Sheikh Kamal and later by Sheikh Kazim. I worked at school for the youngsters and also taught theology to some older students. The bag was brought to my school for me to take a look. One day, the bag was furnished me with the opening words of the Quran. The power and beauty of these words made me realize there is nothing I could teach this young boy. I took the bag home to his uncle and committed him to his care. I told his uncle. This young boy stood in no need of teachers like I. His uncle was angry. He instructed the bar to go back to school and listen attentively to every word spoken by his teacher. While the bar was always touched and humble, I knew he possessed some extraordinary skills and knowledge that the books no teachers like I could be able to give. One day, the Bab came late to school and I asked him why. He told me he has been spending time at the house of his grandfather. The Saints, who are the descendants of Prophet Muhammad, always refer to the Prophet as their grandfather. I told him he was still a young boy and should not spend much time in prayer. He replied quietly, I wish to be like my grandfather. With his innate knowledge of our holy books and his latest spoken desire, I marvel to wonder what the future might hold for this young boy. Despite following the teachings of Sheikh Ahmad and Sid Kazim, it is I I did not make a connection between my own student and the coming of the promised one. My only excuse being no one expects such a young boy to be the promised guy. Mm -hmm. Mm
age. He joined my business. I patiently trained him for three years and he learned to do it. When he turned 16 years of age, he was more than ready to move to Bushir and take care of our commercial interest in that city. He gained an invaluable reputation for nothing but being scrupulous, honest in his business deeds. I was very proud of him. The first 16 years of my boy's life were the very most precious years in all my life. Of course, I doted on my son. He and I, I doted on my son. He and I were very close. He was always so courteous, considerate, and dutiful towards me. He was such a pure and sweet child, so courteous to everyone. But he had a solemn street that sometimes amused me. And he was astonishingly devout in his prayers and meditations, far beyond his years. Of course, every mother thinks that her firstborn is the apple of her eyes. And I surely adore my comparable child. However dutiful my son was in his work, I had long sensed that his true vocation lay not in business and commerce. And then May 1844, he fulfilled a personal dream in setting off to the holy cities of Najaf and Kabila. He drew to a close all of my business affairs, gave the keys to a trusted friend in the bazaar with instructions to turn them over to me or one of his uncles. And he said to me, in this prospect, I realized that this was a tangible beginning in his spiritual life that would see him far away from his origins as a merchant in a family I missed my son so much during his stay in Bushir. It was out of question for me to visit him there, since women were not allowed to travel those days. And what with no good means of transport, except with mules over very bad roads, and safety on the roads was insecure. But thank God, the path was a faithful correspondent. He always returned to Shiraz on occasions, but that wasn't enough for me. I had a premonition that his impending travel to the holy cities might take him far away from me permanently. His mother and I shared same misgivings over his troubles. His sergeant into Iraq stretched nearly into seven months. Fatine wanted nothing more than for my nephew to come back to Shiraz and settle down. She begged me to go to Iraq and convince the mob to leave. When I arrived, the Bab was reluctant to leave the holy place. But at last, he consented to comply with his mother's wishes. I am certain almost that his desire to ameliorate his mother's sadness may have pushed him to accompany me back to Shad. And then, after a few months' stay, he was again talking of going back to Iran. I am Adija Batu. I became the wife of the bar. Our homes were side by side. And as young children, 
the bar and myself were playmates, even though I was three years younger than he was. After he moved to Bashir, I began having dreams about him. In one of the dreams, I dreamed the bar was in a garden plain with beautiful flowers in plenty. He was standing facing the place in an attitude of prayer. He was wearing an outer coat embroidered with the verses of the Quran, embroidered with the prayers of God. In this particular dream, the Bab was only about 16 years old and he was going to be in Bashir for five more years before his return, or before his pilgrimage rather, to the holy cities of Iraq. I realized I had to move quickly to forestall my son's return in Bushi. Our families had an informal argument that he and Hakiti might marry when the time came. The time was now. I went to her home and fulfilled all the protocols of proposing the marriage. When that sweet woman entered the room, I kissed her on the forehead and gave her my most loving embrace. Within mere days, our families had agreed to the engagement and we delivered gifts to formalize the arrangements. She was 20 years old. I was so happy. I got engaged to the bar. We got married in the August of 1842. And before our wedding, I had another vicious dream. I dreamed that the bar was wearing a green cloth. It was actually our wedding night. And this green cloth was still embroidered with the verses of the Quran. The intensity of my happiness on seeing him in this particular dream woke me up. I knew then that it was not just a man, but a great person. My gratitude that he accepted me for his wife increased my love for him even after our marriage. From his words, his personality, his behavior, I knew even more that he was different from any other man. But I never imagined he was the promised one.
the perfect daughter-in-law. He would often say that no one would convey her feelings of good for you. Of my son, she told me that his kindness and his care for her was indescribable. And he was overwhelmed with gratitude at the kindness and consideration I and my son showered on her. They started their married life with such felicity and love. I truly believe that the vow's life was now complete with this felicitous marriage. And soon, Hadithi was expecting her first baby. You can imagine how joyful we were. I couldn't wait to be a grandmother. But then, I had a terrified dream. I dreamt that a fearsome lion was standing in the middle of our courtyard. My arms were around its neck. This beast dragged me around the perimeter of the courtyard two and a half times. I woke up threatened and related the dream to my husband. My husband told me that the trip was told that our life together was only going to last for two and a half years. This compounded my fears. But from his affection, his words of uh, consolation, all this actually consoled me and prepared me uh, for every adversity in the path of God.
not even heads of the earth but not suffice Verily he is so the no one sustainer the omnipotence God suffices all things above all things
I came to realize that this mission was to fulfill the prophecy surrounding the return of the Kaeli and also to proclaim the near advent of the whom God will make manifest. My husband asked me not to share the news of his revelation with his mother, but never. When my husband died, we moved into Hadi Azam's home. But when Hadiji and my son got married, the three of us moved into my family home. It was a spacious house with rooms on the upper and lower floors and a small courtyard. My room was on the lower floor, quite near the front door. Hadiji and my son used to take their meals with me in my room on the lower floor. The first couple of years of their marriage were I did it. From my vantage point of view near the front door, I enjoyed the comings and goings of the family household and the visitors at our home. I couldn't help but notice that at about the third week of May 1844, more and more friends were coming to see my son, often at night. But the guard was silent as to the purpose of those visits. I felt something momentous might be happening, but I didn't know what then a fresh worry for me. At the end of September, the bar decided to take a pilgrimage to the holy cities of Mecca and Medina. He didn't return until July 1845, but at least I did get letters from him. According to one of the traditions of our faith. When the Kaim, all the promised one appeared, he would announce himself at the cover, all the point of aggression. In the courtyard of the great mosque at Mecca. This is what my nephew did. He announced himself as the promise at the cover. I am the primal point from which have been generated all created things. I am the countenance of God, whose splendor can never be obscured. The light of God, whose radiance can never fade. All the keys of heaven God has chosen to place on my right hand, and all the keys of hell on my left. I am one of the sustaining pillars of the primal word of God. Whosoever hath recognized me hath known all that is true and right, and hath attained all that is good and seemly. The substance wherewith God hath created me is not the clay out of which others have been formed. He hath conferred upon me that which the worldly wise can never comprehend, nor the faithful discover. <coughs> One of my brothers was staying in Bushir. He welcomed the arrival of the Bab, one of his followers in Bushir from Mecca. My brother would write the family back in Shiraz, updating us on the news, giving further intimation of the station of the bar, one home, the whole world will later come to know as the gate or the bar. In one of the letters, and I will quote, read apart. You may have perused our pre previous letters and felt a letter that in truth, his self is the source of magnificence. 
the light of the eye of this world and the next. He is our pride. Praise be God. Praise be God. Sadly, sadly, my family was split by the declaration of my nephew. It was only his wife, Hadija Begu, and I, who unreservedly, we accepted his claim. But to my dear sister Fatima, Bam only remained her beloved son. When my husband when my son finally returned to Shiraz, news of his claim to be the promised Kaim had preceded him, and the city's religious leaders had passed a death verdict on him. My son, the death verdict just needed the signature of the Imam Jew, who happened to be an old family friend and who had presided over the marriage of Hadiji and my son. Two of the other ladies of the family joined me to persuade Imam Jumi to stay the order. My son was given a house arrest in the home of his uncle, Pali Azam. The three of us moved into Pali Azam's home and the four of us stay a quiet life. The Bab continued to be so loving and tender towards us. He cheered our hearts, and for once, I felt my apprehension melt away. Then, at Nauru's, the Bab decided to give us unexpected gifts. The Bab donated all of his possessions, including his property, to Hadidi and me. He might have had an intuitive knowledge of his near future, since thereafter he was arrested and taken away. He was later released and told he must leave Shiraz. I went and went.
and day to our indescribable joy. My husband returned home and stayed for two or three days. This was the last days of my life with him. A few days to the beginning of the month of Ramadan and the last days of the month of September in 1846, he announced that his sojourn in Shiraz was no longer advisable and that he would be leaving Shiraz that very day. Two hours after sunset, he left the house all alone and in the company of one of his disciples, he took the road to his father.
days of desolation burdened me with the indescribable grief. My husband had gone from this earthly plan. My mother-in-law had left for Shiraz. My mother-in-law's word of consolation, sympathy, that had sustained me for over years was no longer by my side. My only consolation remained in the tablets that my husband wrote for me. And in one of these tablets, my husband said, Oh, well, beloved, but you hide the grace of God, the great remembrance of coming from God, the loved one. Thou shalt not be a woman like other women. If thou obey in the court of truth, the greatest truth, know thou the great bounty conferred upon thee by the ancient of days, and take pride in being the consort of the world beloved, who is loved by God the greatest. Sufficient unto thee is this glory which cometh unto thee from God, the all wise, the all praise. Be patient in all that God has obeyed concerning the power of his family. Verily, thy son Amma is with Fatimi, the supply in the sanctified paradise. Another time, he revealed to me the secret of his special sufferings. He unfolded before my eyes the things that would befall him in his day. He counseled me to remain patient and recite the will of God. My husband revealed a special prayer for me. The reading of which he said, would remove my difficulties and lighten the burden of my wounds. My husband advised me to read this prayer every night before I go to bed, and he himself will appear and banish my sorrows. Is there any mover of difficulties, said God? Say, praise be God, he is God, all of his servants, and all of by by his beings. Now what is 
Mwishi kwa mapenzi yake Na wote wanaishi kwa mapenzi yake In summary form from the point of view of those who knew him best, those who interacted with him. Unfortunately, and as it has happened in the histories of the manifestations of God, there is suffering. And um, in the year 1850, in Tabriz, Persia, the Bab was put to execution. As a result of so many people becoming his followers, the government, which was against his teachings, enrolled 750 soldiers to take his life. It's a very interesting story that I would invite each and everyone gathered here to follow up because the first 750 bullets did not kill the Bab, simply because, as he had mentioned shortly before, that in my words, no power on earth can stop him until he has finished what he had been sent by God to do. The second, 750 soldiers were brought in, they managed to execute, but at that time he had told them, now, you are free to do as you are asked. But allow me to read in his words, his very words. It's the very last statement he made to the people who are gathered to witness his execution. And I quote: All we were generation, while the last words of the Bab, the gazing multitude, as, he, as the regiment prepared to fire its volume. How do you believe in me? Every one of you would have followed the example of this youth who stood in rank above most of you and would have willingly sacrificed himself in my path. The day will come when you will have recognized me. That day I shall have ceased to be with you. Thereafter, his body, under the instructions of Baha'u'llah, the messenger of God for today, was moved from one place to another until eventually it was laid to rest on Mount Carmel. And that is the shrine of the Baha, or sitting on Mount Carmel, well known as the Queen of Carmel.
robed in white and crowned in gold, she stands for unity. God will send his heart for me, as mentioned in the book of days. Cry out to Zion, cry to your Lord. Cry out to Zion, Sakurab in adoration, Sakurab to Lord, Sakurab, Sakurab in adoration, Sakurab to Lord, Sakurab, Sakurab. Maybe tribal, maybe social, where all manner of prejudices that we have to eliminate if we have to entertain unity and peace of, of mankind. And the song that was just presented here, it was exactly around uh, when the Baha'is go on pilgrimage on Mount in Haifa, Israel which is the headquarters of the spiritual administrative center of the Baha'i faith. That's basically the place that they go to. The Queen of Carmel is a shrine of the Baha, as we mentioned. That's where his remains are, and it's one of the holy places of the Baha'is. The places that we go for those who can afford on pilgrimage. And the Baha'u'llah tells us that the group goes on high, circle around in adoration, circle around on, uh, the shrine of the Pope in adoration. We are inviting the friends who are gathered here today, those who may have heard of the faith before or those who are hearing it for the first time, to take a moment and try to investigate who is Baha'u'llah. What has Baha'u'llah come to offer to humanity? What is the will of God for today? What is the purpose of our life? Where have we come from? Where are we? Where are we heading? In rebuilding society. We are here to build an ever advancing civilization. As I call upon uh, the team to join in presenting the, it's normally a children's play. Uh, we understand the children can make a mistake here or a mistake there, but see it from the point of view of having fun. In this presentation, we are going to see the different prejudices that exist in the world. Uh, let us also learn it and see it, not without any prejudice, uh, and try to understand what is the teaching or what is the theme or the moral of the presentation. Thank you. 
Marafiki tumeweza kuona mafunzo ya Bahaula yanaweza kutuondea hizo okay. kutupa hiyo kuweza kuelewa kwamba Mungu ni mmoja dini ni moja na binadamu ni mmoja tumwabudu yule Mungu mmoja um, uh, Asanteni sana and I want to hand over to our beloved MC uh, to take us through to the next we are heading to the end of this program um, so let's be a little bit patient before we can uh, break for lunch Asante sana bwana Marafiki tulivyotaja hapo awali kwamba It's all right. Did I make a mistake? <laughs> Now, his most Joseph Bisheru has part of Bangladesh. Um, Sawa. Kwa hivyo tulivyotaja mwanzo ya kwamba yeyote yatakayofanyika kwenye hili jukwaa yatakuwa na tufunguo macho yanatupa ufahamu zaidi kuhusu hawa baadhi ya kina nani huyu babu ni nani kwa nini tumekusanyika hapa lakini ningependa tukao fursa hii kuwashukuru wale ambao waliweza kuleta huo mchezo wa kuingiza wamekusaidia kufahamu tuko tunajiuliza je babu alioa je alikuwa na familia lakini pia presentation yao imeweza kuleta mwanga zaidi kwa maswali mengi ambayo tulikuwa tunajiuliza sivyo ningependa tu appreciate in a special way kwamba
But why do we fight? Killing one another when we all come from the same breath of life. And I repeat this message of Baha'u'llah. He are the fruits of one tree, the flowers of one garden, and the waves of one sea. Eh? 